Okay, welcome everyone. I'm gonna get into the charts. We're gonna look at really what's going on and, and try to find some trade ideas. Uh, so if you guys find some value in the content, leave me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it, I appreciate that. And um, real quick, you know, um, I just kind of a full disclaimer, you know, I don't get every single trade right, nobody does. So when I put out trade ideas or talk about, you know, levels, um, really all I'm trying to do is point out the levels and and then everyone can really take or react to those levels if you know if the trade works out based on those levels then then great but again you know I try to give my thoughts on where I think the market's going and where <clears throat> where a certain stock is going and I get you know I get some of them right I get some of them wrong then you know really the point is is that, Nobody gets all trades right. It's really more about <clears throat> managing the trade. So if you get a trade right, great. And if you get a trade wrong, cut your losses and, you know, take smaller losses than you do uh, gains, you know, lose small and gain big. And that's really it. So uh, let's get right into it. All right, NASDAQ futures. So we have this bearish rising wedge here. We broke, uh, we broke down. So, you know, we got a sell signal basically, and then it did a back test. Uh, and then it's it, it's kind of hanging in there around. So you got this low right here. So I'm looking for a break of the low. Uh, they're they're kind of whipping it around. They they made it look like it was going to break for a second, and then they recovered it. So I don't know if it's gonna. It might just consolidate in this area for a while until maybe the end of the day. I know there's some crazy stuff that's supposed to happen at the end of the trading day. Uh, so. But I would suspect if there's going to be big selling, they're going to step in early uh, and not wait for the actual end of the day. Uh, S&P 500 rebalancing. What what's happening is everyone has to buy Tesla basically. So uh, that that's an indexed indexed fund. So again, waiting for that to break. Let's look at triple Qs. It, here here it is right here. You've got this area. Um, it's a well, you know, I've got it marked out at about 309.45, it looks like. Um, and you had a couple reactions, one there, one there, and then a little bit of resistance right there. Um, you could move it up. It could it could be right there at about 309.50, we'll call it. But you want to see that break. You know, I'm looking for an impulsive sell signal. All right, when you break a bearish rising wedge, you look for that impulsive breakdown. So maybe this is they're just going to... <clears throat> hang out here for a little while then you'll get the impulsive sell signal uh, but until you see that big red candle that impulsive breakdown and you'll see it in the one on the one minute chart when it happens it'll be a lot of selling will come in and it'll it'll be fast and and, and furious so I'm looking for that I don't see it yet <clears throat> spy uh, spy here's your upward price channel in the spy it has not broken that so that's one of the reasons why the queues probably isn't going to sell off too much uh, you can see here that we're basically coming down into the support, but we're still in the upward trend. <clears throat> so again, <clears throat> looking at the divergences and everything, we still have negative divergences on the daily chart. You can see it right here. Still there, hasn't gone anywhere. And you can see on the PPO, still have a bearish crossover. So technically the indicators are still telling me that a trend reversal or, you know, uh, you know, basically a trend reversal is is pending, but you got to wait for those sell signals. We just don't see them yet. So uh, we'll continue to just watch those. And I just want to point that this stuff out now so that when or, you know, if or when the sell signal comes, uh, you know, you'll be able to jump on it because I won't be able to put out a video and tell you everyone, hey, there's the sell signal, great time to sell. I'll get it out as fast as I can. But by the time the video gets out, uh, you know, a lot of the opportunity will will have been missed. Okay, volatility. I bought some volatility yesterday. Uh, I bought it on VXX. That's the one I've been doing. But <clears throat> the point is, is it, here's what I liked about it. If I mark out the hourly here, you can see we had this bullish falling wedge right here. And, um, and I've got this other trend line too. I was kind of playing around with it, but it's it's not so much. But we've got this bullish falling wedge right here. We broke we broke out, so that was you know a buy signal to buy some volatility. It broke out, and then um, and then it came in for a back test the last few days, 
And so, you know, we had a sell signal in the queues the other day. Uh, let me flip over to that real quick. And you know, on the daily chart, this was your sell signal right here. And you, you had this bounce, you know. So if, if we're going to get more selling, this bounce was a perfect bounce to wa wash out these, these shorts right here, uh, including myself. I, I did cover my short yesterday, and I just am waiting for another sell signal. If it comes today, I'll re-enter the short. But uh, again, and I think we're going to get one, but I don't know when. So I, I just decided to cover, let it, you know, if it wants to go a little higher and then the sell signal comes, I'll get short at a higher level. But we had the sell signal right here. You had the kickback, you know, you had a bounce. And so it, we should get another sell signal. And, you know, this, this, uh, sell, this downward trend should start. Uh, so you, but you got to wait for that sell signal. And volatility, going back to the VXX, volatility, basically during that time when we were getting that bounce, just drifted down and came close to testing the uh, the support level that it formerly broke out from. So I bought some more volatility right down there, uh, long, and obviously today we're getting you know higher prices. So the one thing I was also looking back is, what does this look like in the past? And I was really analyzing back here, you can see in the, right before the COVID, uh, you know, really that COVID uh, rip higher in volatility, we basically had a bullish falling wedge like this. And if I zoom in, you can see we broke to the upside there. And then we, you know, went up and then drifted back and retested that trend line for a little while. And so that's what it looked like it was doing again right here. You can, as I zoom in, you can see broke up, drifted back, retest the trend line, and then you get the big breakout. So I added to my long volatility position and again, this is how I build volatility positions. I think we're going to get get a good size sell off, and vol I like to I like to kind of stage into it. You know, I'll buy some on a breakout. I'll buy a little more on a back test. I never have a huge position in this stuff because you don't need a really large position to make a lot of money in these things. If you get it right, if you get the call right and the trade right, uh, you'll you'll typically do very well, making you know 100 percent, 60, 70, 80 percent. And so, yeah, that's volatility. Small caps, this has really been the star of the show recently. And you've got negative divergence right here on the daily, or this is the hourly chart, sorry. Um, so we've been walking up this uptrend line here. Let's look at the daily here. Uh, no negative divergence on the daily that I can see. So it might not be ready for a big drop, you know. I usually like, to, I mean, we can get a drop on the hourly because we do have negative divergence on the hourly telling us that we're going to get a drop. Usually the daily, when it shows up on the daily, it can take a while to play out. But when you get it uh, and then and then you start seeing price action, uh, you know, selling off, uh, usually that's good for a much larger trend trade versus just a quick, you know, a quick drop, one or two, three day drop. Usually it's good for you know weeks, potentially months uh, of a move. So we don't have that on the we don't have negative divergence on the IWM on the daily um, as of right now, and no sell sig no sell signals either. You've got the uptrend line; it's continuing to move higher. Uh, so there's no reason there's no sell signal. No, nothing to short. If you're long, you can stay long. Uh, if you if you're not long, I. You know, I wouldn't chase. Uh, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't chase the move. Uh, I think it's. It's. It, you know, typically in the market, when a move has has been made or it's gotten away from you, if you chase, you get burned. And so, that's. I. I, I don't chase these moves. But what I do do is get in on moves before they've been made. And so you can see here, gold. This is gold bullion. We get. We had a breakout yesterday. Today we're just kind of consolidating. Let's go down to the hourly. Um, you know, just consolidating. Looks like we're just flagging out for another move up. So if that's true, maybe you, we've got this and you get the flag and a breakout, something like that, putting us up to, uh, you know, 1900 or so. But as of right now, gold is did break out and it is uh, still holding up there. Now, yes, this could be a false breakout. So, you know, we could get a big red candle like this and, re, you know, come back down uh, the and you know I 
I don't know if we're going to get it, but it might happen. And if we do, if we do get that big impulsive sell off and it undercuts these lows right here, then you would have bullish divergence on the daily chart. We don't have that right now. All we have is momentum moving higher and we have price moving higher. So there's no divergence. You don't have to have divergence to, you know, for, for a trend to take place, but uh, it just sometimes gives a heads up. And then you can see on the PPO, we had the bullish crossover right there on the daily chart. So as of right now, it's a breakout. XLV, nothing really going on in XLV. Uh, it's just, it, you know, it's basically in a upward drift, a very slow upward drift with negative divergence in place. Uh, I'm still looking for this thing to sell off. Uh, and so it will likely continue to just drift upward slowly uh, before it sells off. XLF, it's just sideways. You know, we're, we're just consolidating, kind of grinding around sideways. Uh, I don't see anything. I, I did take a short position in Citibank. See, that one looked bearish. It's down a percent today. Nothing crazy, and it's still really just kind of hanging in there. Uh, just, you know, this is resistance about 60, 20. It looks good, I, but I could still easily see it pop up a little bit, kind of pop up, wash out some shorts. Uh, usually when you, you know, usually when you're in an area like that and you're at resistance, if you don't just reject, you might just come up and do a, a little, uh, you know, a little pop above resistance. And so I'm expecting that. Uh, what I like about this one, though, you can see negative divergence right there on the daily, bearish PPO crossover. Let me zoom in, see it right there. So you've got a bearish crossover, you've got a negative divergence, you have major resistance right here, coming all the way back from the 2011 lows, and you can see reaction, reaction, reaction here, a uh, little whipsaw up above that. That was an island cluster reversal uh, top right there. And then it did sell off. And then we've, we're coming back and back testing that resistance. So to pop up into this area, maybe wash out, you know, run some stops and then reject would be completely uh, normal. Uh, and so just something to expect, you know, look for if that comes comes to play. But I do think this this starts to sell off sometime soon. XLE looks like it wants to break down. I don't know if it's going to happen today or maybe if we get that sell signal and the rest of the markets, it'll it'll happen but here's what i was pointing out about xle so i was long xle down here i was bullish uh buying xle we got a big breakout i took profit into the in, you know into these levels uh and i was long xom and cvx which are the uh, exxon mobile and chevron but then we've got now we've got bearish divergence on the daily so there's your bearish divergence right there the ppo you got a bearish ppo crossover so it's confirming those divergences and we also have a trend line right here on the daily that was recently broken with the sell signal. So there's your sell signal. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think we head down to this level, 3428, uh, probably get, you know, the buyers are likely to step in there and we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Where's that level come from? Well, you can see it's back here. You can see you, you held the support here, you held the support there, and then you were, it was resistance back here. So then now that we broke it, uh, that former resistance should become support again. So I'm looking at a move back down to that level. And then we'll have to see where it goes. You know, it, I don't know if it'll, you know, if it breaks or, or if it bounces. I mean, you're likely to get a reaction there. Uh, doesn't mean it's, you know, we're not going to go lower than that. Uh, the fangs here are all selling off, but they're, you know, they're really just stuck in this big sideways range. So there's nothing, there's nothing technically that's really changed yet. Um, I mean, you can see we're start on Apple. We're starting to get what looks like a little bit of a, a trend line right here. Maybe watch that and a break of that would give it be a sell signal. But in general, just a sideways action uh, across the board. Uh, so yeah, we might be topping. We might be consolidating. Nobody really knows a potential head and shoulders pattern right there in Amazon. So maybe if we want to break down and break the neckline, then this would, was a, a topping pattern. Uh, one thing to think about is, you know, if these indices have to sell or have to buy Tesla and it's it's expensive, it is not a cheap stock, then they've got to potentially sell 
some of the other, uh, you know, pr probably these FANG stocks to make room for that Tesla stock. So that might, you know, we'll, we'll see what that does. You know, if the selling comes in on these FANGs, look for the markets to go lower. Uh, Redfin here. So I keep pointing this one out. I'm not short this stock, but obviously I think it looks like it's going to be a good short <clears throat> uh, sometime. I, you know, there's, there's no, there's no signal or anything I can go off of to short it. We do have this uptrend line right here. So what I suspect happens is we, we kind of pull back down to this trend line and then we bounce higher. We get a, a final move higher and we get negative divergence on the daily chart when on that final move higher. We don't have negative divergence right now. There, there is literally just uh, bullish momentum basically and uh, we made a new high in the RSI. So there's no negative divergence. Everything's bullish. And obviously this thing's gone parabolic. I mean, when it started its rise down here, it went up 80, you know, well, 90% in a matter of about a month. So that's pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm expecting that usually when you get moves that go straight up, they come straight down eventually as well. So until we get a sell signal though, there's no reason to short this thing. If you're long, you can obviously stay long. I don't see any, I, you know, I wouldn't see any reason as of right now to get out. Although I do think it probably pulls back to this trend line and, and then it likely gets a bounce off of that. Let's look at this other one, I, M P. Uh, this is also another one that's just pretty much gone parabolic. And as you can see, uh, there's no reason to get out. You know, uh, I'm not in it, but here's the thing. You've got negative divergence on the daily. So it's right there. It's telling you the trend is going to change relatively soon, but the trend has not changed. So it tells you, okay, trend's going to change. Here's a trend line on the daily chart and you're looking for that sell signal, but the sell signal's not there. So, it, you know, if it's not there, you can remain long until, until that trend breaks. If you're not long, I don't think getting long when you have negative divergence is always the smartest thing. Uh, you know, if you have negative divergence in place and you're not long the stock, I think it makes more sense to look for look for the reversal. Uh, and that's really all I have to say about that. Let's move on. Okay, Carvana. So yeah, they did a false breakout. It looks like here's your daily chart, and we've got this bearish rising wedge right here. We've just been walking up the wedge. And you can see yesterday they broke it up or, you know, broke to the upside, look, making it look like it was a breakout. And yet today we don't have the daily close yet. So if they close it here, this could just be a back test and then it's going to continue higher. Uh, we, we, we still have to wait for that daily close. If you look on the hourly, as of right now, it's broken back down, uh, back down within that wedge. So look for the daily close and how that sets up. That might mean there's actually a, a little bit more of a move up or we've, or this was a false breakout and we're heading down. As of right now, it's undecided. We need more data. Uh, but you know, again, on the daily chart, big negative divergence right here. So, you know, you, you really, you got your negative divergence right there. This is where the negative divergence showed up. And then, you know, you had a little bit of a drop but the negative divergence is just continuing to extend because we made new highs. When you make new highs and the momentum has not made a new high, then you're still, you still have negative divergence. So again, I suspect it's going to go down, but this market has, this market's kind of full of euphoria. And so there's a lot of people that are just rushing in and chasing and just FOMOing and buying just stocks that are going parabolic. Um, and that will all end uh, badly, but uh, it doesn't, you know, we, we just don't know when. So there's always the possibility that that happens in this Carvana stock and it just rips to the upside. Um, so we'll watch it. Okay, Peloton has negative divergence as of right now. So you can see here on the daily chart, this is something I've been looking for in this stock for a while. I figured we were gonna get it, but one of the things I never liked about shorting this thing, uh, even when it broke down, it broke the trend line. So here's your trend line on the daily chart of Peloton. And it broke, it was a nice impulsive breakdown, but it broke without negative divergence. So there was no negative divergence on the daily chart when, when we were down here. So I was expecting that to show up sometime and 
So I was looking for a back test and that's when I was looking for the negative divergence to show up and it has. So we made a new high today. We've just popped briefly over the pr previous high and the momentum, you can see my trend line, I didn't even move this. It actually just came right up to it. And so we do have negative divergence. Now it's not confirmed because the momentum is up. You can see the PPO is pointed up. So there could be a little more upside in this and we could actually come in for a full back test of this trend line maybe up around this 150, see if I can zoom in there, <clears throat> around this 157, 156, somewhere right around there maybe <clears throat> uh, for a full back test and then, and then reject. So uh, until you see a sell signal or the momentum start to uh, roll over, look for some sort of a reversal day, a gap down, something like that. That would be the signal. But until then, you know, momentum's up and we just need to wait for a sell signal. But we do have negative divergence, so it's telling me that it's likely to, <clears throat> it's likely to reverse uh, sometime soon. And I'm keeping a close eye on this Intel stock. You know, it has the potential to, you know, to be starting a bear market in this stock. If I go to the weekly, you can see here, here's Intel, and this is the 2009 lows. And so here's your bull market in Intel. And look at the price action that we're getting right in this area. So we have, you know, we broke that trend right here. This is the first time we broke the trend and, and rolling back lots of reactions on this trend line. I mean, you have the lows, lots of reactions in here, several in there, another one there, another one there. So it's a pretty valid trend line. We broke and then they recovered it and closed it on this week, they closed it back within support. So at that moment, it looked very, you know, it looked bullish because this looked like a bear trap. But as you can see, the several, you know, the next two weeks, we're, we're, we're heading lower. So if this is gonna break, it's it should do it impulsively. And going back to the daily, you know, we're getting a somewhat impulsive breakdown of the day uh, on the daily chart. It's it's the day's not over yet, um, and the PPO looks like it's poised to make a bearish crossover right there. Uh, so watch for that. And if you go back to the hourly, you can see that's kind of what's going on. So again, you need to see that close. I'd be looking for some sort of some more selling, basically, uh, or some sort of uh, rejection or sell signal on the major markets should help this thing, but it's it's the it does have the potential to to roll over and be starting a new uh, bear market in this stock. Little too early to to call it, but I'll be watching it. Neo coming back up to the top end of its uh, the sideways chop zone it's been in. So you've got resistance right here at 48.30 and you got support, which is about 38.80. You, know, you can see we've tagged this resistance twice already there and there. So we're just coming back up to it. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I still think this is likely to head down to this trend line right down here. When we get there, I don't know. You know, this could go sideways and then just get there through that method. Uh, but I still think that we'll get to that trend line uh, sometime soon. Tesla, I think they're kind of buying Tesla. It's not up a whole lot today, but obviously, you know, looks like it's trying to do another leg higher. So we'll see how this thing plays out. I've got a short position on this. It's not a very large short position. Uh, I, I just, this thing looks like it's run pretty, just too far, basically. Um, what's too far? Well, you know, we have negative divergence that there, there's technicals justifying my short position. Um, you, you know, we've got big extended negative divergence that's really been in place for a while. And you see the PPO, we had a bearish PPO crossover right there. So the technicals tell me that, you know, we're, we're, we're going lower. And this high, this high that we just made today is another divergent high. We just don't have that impulsive sell signal. So Again, I'm comfortable staying short as when I have these bearish technicals in place, uh, even without the sell signal. On this one, I think when it starts selling, it's probably going to be pretty impulsive and pretty fast. Now, yes, I know that the S&P 500 guys are going to be buying it and it's going to be indexed, 
But again, if the index starts selling, they're going to sell Tesla just as fast. So um, just because it's in the S&P 500 doesn't mean it's you know always going to go up. Okay, uh, FedEx. So again, this is another one that did ha you know has been working for me. Um, I got short right here on the break of this bearish rising wedge, and so far it is up by about six and a half percent. Yeah, we're at support. So this is the level that I had as first level of support. Looks like we're getting a reaction, so we're likely to bounce. Maybe we come up and fill this gap. Maybe we even run up and make a new high. Nobody knows. Uh, but we're at support now. And so the next break of this support level should bring us down to the next level of support around 258. Well, it's about 259. <clears throat> uh, this one was a really clean chart. It had, if you go to the daily here, you had clean negative divergence right there. And you had a bearish rising wedge. You just waited, waited for the break. There's your break and your sell signal. And, and it's continuing to work. And we'll wrap up with the dollar because the dollar, I think, has really been what, you know, I, I think this this tr this year's bullish momentum has really all been about the dollar losing value. So things are getting more expensive and the dollar is losing value. <clears throat> so here's what we got going on in the dollar. And as I expected, we're getting a little bit of a bounce today. It, it, it looks like it's going to keep this bullish divergence intact. So we made a new low, and if we continued to go down, we would have burned through the bullish divergence and made a you know a new low. But if I zoom zoom in here on the RSI, you can see it's a higher a higher low right there. So it's a bullish divergence. Uh, so I suspect we go up a little bit more, then we could sell off again and still keep that bullish divergence. So watch for that. Um, or we just rally, you know, and, and just move higher. Now, if we move higher and start to rally hard, the markets are going to come down pretty hard. They're pretty pumped up. So I would expect, you know, if we start getting bullish price action in the dollar, <clears throat> it's going to, you know, you're going to get a pretty swift uh, down move in markets. And that's really all I got, guys. Thank you for everyone. And leave me a thumbs up again if you find value. I'll catch you guys on the next one.